Hello everyone and welcome to another Monday evening of Creating With Me. My name is Lillian Kemp and I come to you from Alberta, Canada. And um, one of the things I'm really thankful for tonight is the temperatures are much more comfortable. In fact, in my books, they're about perfect. So my glasses won't be sliding off my nose tonight and uh, hopefully I won't be dropping everything I touch. So thank you for joining me and let's go down to my desk and see what, what we're going to be doing tonight. Let's go here. There we go. And... There we go, right here. Now, as promised, I am going to focus on designer paper tonight. Um, I'm just getting the computer going here, making sure I have the sound turned off and, and that we're centered. There we go. All righty, okay. And I hope that you, whoops, that's supposed to be turned off. There we go. And I hope that you are all enjoying this cooler weather too and that you managed to stay comfortable last week. So um, tell me one thing that you are looking forward to this summer. What's something you're enjoying or looking forward to doing this summer? I know that I am really enjoying uh, the little more freedom that we have and being able to see people's smiles when it's we're out and about not having them covered up by by uh, masks so much so um, I'm enjoying that part and otherwise I, I'm going to look forward to our backyard those of you who are familiar with our yard you know my husband has it looking great and um, there's just really no better place to be. So that being said, let's get on with tonight. I, I told you ahead of time that is Judy traveling again. Yes. Are you are you going to travel? Um, are you going out to see your mom maybe? I don't know. I, I am wondering if I can go see my mom or not. I'm going to be checking that out. So, um, so you're signing in from Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver Island. Hi, Linda. Hi, Diana. I love camping. You've already been able to go camping. That is super. So yes, really want to see your mom. I want to see mine too. So hopefully that works out for us. So let's look at the designer series paper sale. Um, so there's there are nine papers that are on sale. They're the ones in the annual catalog that are not what we call specialty papers. They um, they they don't have gold in them or metallics or something like that. And I'm going to be concentrating on these for the next little while. And um, you were all over the map as to what you wanted me to do. But um, I'm going to choose one that will work for a masculine one tonight. I was hearing that from a few people. And then I'm going to actually touch base on all of these within the next week or so. And I've even got a designer series paper class in the works. So stay tuned for that as well. So let's take a look at these designer papers that are on sale, 15% off. So there is the beauty of the earth. And remember when I do my sheets, it's front and back or one side, then the other side. So you've got all of these gorgeous ones here. And these are the coordinating colors for that. And then the other one is one I used last week, actually, the Bloom Where You're Planted. And this one I'm using in a class that's being offered. I'm going to talk about that towards the end. And again, uh, the two sides. I love that brickwork. I love that right now. So there we go. And that's the coordinating. One that was a returning favorite. And this is one of those mega packs. It's It's got a double pack of paper and... Um, Catherine asked if I could use this tonight. I'm not going to use it tonight, but tonight's card would use this very, very easily. And I am going to try to use it um, coming up. So wonderful, wonderful background papers. You might recognize some of these as even in my photographs, I use them in the background for my cards, but they're wonderful to create with too. And again, these are the coordinating colors here. So I'll put that to the side. Then the hand-penned, uh, gorgeous papers again. I've done a lot of cards with these. You've seen me use it. I will again do use it some more, but gorgeous, gorgeous paper with gorgeous colors. And then Yora Peach, you know that I've been on a Yora Peach um, 
kick lately and this is fabulous paper and um, you'll see that as well. I've also got the You're a Peach class going so uh, some of you have registered for that. Yes Lynn it is such pretty paper. Um, I just love it. And then Tidings of Christmas. Now this is six by six paper not the 12 by 12 but wonderful colors for Christmas or any season. This is not limited to Christmas. It works with Christmas beautifully, but not limited. That's what I like about that. So that's the six by six paper, the sweet symmetry. Um, again, paper it took me a while to warm up to, and I am actually really, really enjoying it right now. So there is that one. And what's, no, that's not. So, and the pansy petals. So again, the front and back. I, I love the contrast and all these fabulous color, colors. And then the one we're going to use tonight is In the Wild. Now, In the Wild is one that I looked at and I thought, mm, I don't know if I need it. Well, you know that I caved and I got it. Um, but I am really glad I did. I am enjoying it a lot. Now, uh, some of these colors, we don't, and the um, might say, oh, I don't know, but they work so well together in this pop of crushed curry in here really, really works. So these are the coordinating colors. And I thought I would work with one that you, a designer paper that maybe um, hadn't caught your eye, or if you have it, you're not too sure about it, and it might be harder for you to use. So I'm going to give you a few ideas, but first off, we're going to make tonight's card. So let me put this to the side and bring in, where did I put it? Oh, there we go. Bring in the sheet that I have chosen to use. So I am going to use this sheet here and we're going to go, we're going to see both sides. Uh, so now I have to cut this. So I even left the cutting for you. I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter by 12. And I want it so that when I'm looking at it with the long side at the top, that that would be the the top. So I need the I, that's how I'm paying attention to the direction. Some paper isn't directional, and then it doesn't matter. So five and a quarter. I better stop talking and pay attention here. Five and a quarter by twelve. There we go. So we've got that cut, and we can put that to the side. And we bring this back in, and now we're going to score it at one, four, and eight. Now, before I score it, I'm just going to think if I if I want it, let me show you one of the cards. So here's the same card that we're making in um, the sweet symmetry. So what it is, is the, the designer paper goes like that. Hi, Roz. Um, and then it folds back and makes a border here. So let's see, am I going to want this to be the main card and this to fold back or am I going to want this to be the main card and this to fold back that's your decision so um, you can decide on that when you're um, hi Rhonda um, when you're doing your card tonight I think I am going to make it so the one inch score line is just a second, let me think this through. So I want the one inch score line here because I want the the lion, the tigers, whatever I've got here, looking at us and this being the border. So I'm going to do one inch here. And let's make sure to use the scoring tool. So we've got that out of the way. The scoring tool is the light one. Let's get back in here. There we go. I'm just doing it that way, like that. So I've done it at one inch. Now I'm going to flip it and do it at the line, the, this edge up. So it's at four inches and at eight inches. Now you could just score it at four and eight. And then once you decide, um, with what the way you want it to go then you could do your one inch score but that's what I'm going to do I'm going to keep this handy because I'm going to need it for a minute so 
There we go. So this is going to fold in like that. I'm keeping my edges nice and even and burnish the fold. I think I've got my camera just a little bit low. I'm going to bring it up a smidge. There we go. Open that up. Bring this in, lining up my edges. So what I've got right now is a 12 inch long piece of paper scored at four and eight. So it's in thirds. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna close this and if that binds, see it kind of buckles a little bit, I'm going to give this just a little bit of a haircut. So uh, it's just a smidge just so that it doesn't bind. So I'm going to bring that in and I'm actually even just going to line it up where the trimmer changes there. So it doesn't have to be much, just, just so that it doesn't bind in there. See how little that was? And yet that's going to make all the difference for it lying flat. So there, that's all that I need the paper trimmer for. And I still have one fold to make, don't I? I have this fold here. So we're going to bring that like that. So now, we. this is our basic card. All it is is decorating it. But I want something behind it. Now, the papers, the coordinating colors are these colors right here. So here's where the big choice is. What color am I going to rest this on? And I have played with this and every single color works. So I made an executive decision, but you would likely, I think you would likely all have a different opinion. So that's with the Evening Evergreen, Mary Merlot, Cajun Craze, Maybe you should have gone with Cajun Craze. I like that. Um, basic Black. When in doubt, go with Black, right? Soft Succulent. And um, Crushed Curry. So I had a hard time deciding and there was no one around to ask. So I did go with the Evening Evergreen and it's five and a half by four and a quarter. In other words, it's a quarter sheet of cardstock. Oh, Judy, good. We agree on it. So then this is just going to get glued down onto that and just centered, just as if we, this was a, a top panel to a card. So let's bring in some adhesive and you can use whatever adhesive you want. This is a brand new bottle of the multi-purpose and it's nice and juicy. I was using my old one this afternoon and it was really hard to get ink or ink glue out of and so that is just a treat to have it flowing like that so there we'll just press it down like that and now you can see that this is your basic card it's going to fit in your basic envelope and yet it's got all these fun folds so now what to do so um i shared with you that I was, I like a little pop of yellow. So on some of the cards that I've made using this design, I've just put one little piece in here just to give that border. But I decided I wanted a pop of yellow too. So I'm going to go and put this here. I see some hearts. Yay, thank you. I love that. Uh, there, so I, that's just going to add it a little pop, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel that I folded and I'm just going to put some adhesive along there. And I likely should bring in my silicone mat in case I get a little adhesive crazy here. Let's do that. And then I'm going to put my yellow down and then just take this paper to that and place it down. I'm gonna pick it up so I can see it a little bit better and I don't want much, but I just want that pop of color like that. So see how that's going to look? Now I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to put some adhesive here. And, and some of the times I've made this card, I haven't done the two layers here and others I have. It just sort of depends what, I'm, what I decide to do at the moment. 
So there, and I'm going to make that just a smidge bigger so that I have a little variety. Whoops. And then I smudged my glue. So let's get that back in position and cover that up. There we go. There. So now it is looking like that. Now you can do whatever you want to this. If you noticed on this card here, I just cut some rectangles and stamped on the rectangles and put them here and it opened like that. So, but you can use whatever shape you want. So for example, if you wanted, if you had these, you could do something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a shape from what what die set did I use here this is from the tasteful labels so there's all different shapes in here now you could use a punch as and like I said you can just die cut or you can just cut a shape but I'm going to use this one here and what I like about these ones is they give a little bit of embossing around the edges and I'm going to bring in um, Cajun Craze and Evening Evergreen ink and I looked through my sets because I was looking for something that would be suitable to give to a, a guy and so I ended up concentrating on the words as much as anything and from the uh, stamp set that the way all done I chose, you're kind of a big deal. I thought that would work. And these are photopolymers, so I'm going to bring in a sponge here. This one is a sponge for the Stamparatus. It works just fine. So I'll put it like that. And I'm going to ink this up with Evening Evergreen. Make sure it's nice and inky and one two three there we go there got that and I'll close that up before I end up putting something in it now I wanted just a little something more there um, so I'll bring in some scrap paper because I'm going to go off and in the same stamp set is um, a little splotchy thing speckles I call them and I love speckles they just add a little bit of extra now you can do it like I showed you last week by using your um, marker but this time I'm going to use a stamp and I'm going to stamp it off once so it's a little bit lighter and I'm just going to add a few speckles here and there change my direction a little bit and that might be pretty good. I can never stop. I always just want to put something there. There we go. So better stop. Um, actually, I want to add just a little bit coming down there. There we go. Just like that. So I've got it um, like that. So it's ready to go. Now, if I put it on here, it looks a little bit tiny. So to make it bigger, what I did was I cut out a circle using the layering circles. And then I took, I remembered that I have the hammered metal 3D die and I ran the circle through that. And I thought it would add just a little bit more to here. So I can put it there, I can put it there. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. I need to glue this down because it's flapping away. And, and that's that's a look, that's just fine, but I don't want it to do that. I want it to be down nice and flat. There we go. So let's fasten this to here. And I think I'm going to glue this to here right down you could put it on dimensionals and then I'm going to put the whole thing on dimensionals so let's put a bit of adhesive on here like that and because it's on a circle I just have to watch my placement and then we're good to go right I because the circle doesn't matter I love working with circles so let's move this out of the way and move this out of the way and go back to this and bring in some dimensionals and 
I think I'm going to use my black dimensionals. I only have the mini black at the moment. And let's work on the placement. I'm going to have it overhang here just a little bit. So that's about where I want it. So I'm going to put some black dimensionals here. Being a little generous because they are tiny. And then I'm going to put just a couple right here. That way I know they're not going to go over. I don't want any dimensionals on the overhang, on the piece that's going to hang over. So because that would seal the card, right? So let's take those backings off. Like that. And fasten it down. Can you see how easy this would be with any designer paper? And some of you might be saying, oh, but I have six by six, Lillian. Um, well, later this week, I'm going to show you how to do the same design with six by six. So hang in there. Um, I don't know about you, but some people find it difficult to start to use their designer paper. And once you actually cut into your designer paper, it's sort of freeing. I noticed that about, oh, I would say three years ago, I was I had a surplus of designer paper because it was too pretty to cut. And it was hard to cut into. And I made myself to start using it. And now I actually use designer paper on, I would think, three quarters of my projects. And I use my designer paper up. And after all, I I do know where I can buy more, right? But Stamping Up has such gorgeous paper and they're always bringing out more gorgeous paper. So um, I thought, why not? And so I'm having fun with that. Okay, stop rambling here, Lillian. We're going to now bring in a punch that is new. It's actually part of the Sweet Symmetry um, bundle, or you can buy it by itself. Now we're getting several punches. There's a, a tree one, the evergreen tree one as well, that are called border punches. And I just wanted to show you how this worked. So what you do is you slide your paper in and you make sure, just a second, let's see if I can get rid of some of this glare. You slide it in so it's, there's a ledge here and you slide it in so it's snug up to the, the ledge and make sure it's snug and like that. Now we're going to slide it along and do you see how there is, there's the design here and here. What you do is slide it along until it matches. So let me pick that up so you can see. Can you see that right now it's not matching? You can see that the, it's not lined up. But if I go like that, it's lined up. So now it's lined up. It's butted up against the edge there. And I'm going to punch again. And hence the name a border punch because I could do a whole border or I could just punch out a few and have these for fun. Now one of the things to remember with these more intricate punches or even these, they uh, if you read the instructions when you get them, they say to um, stamp or to stamp, to punch a few times uh, before you use it on your cardstock, so on scrap paper, because sometimes there are just residue oils left in here in a few punches in scrap paper, and it's all cleaned up. So Rhonda, you cut it in, half of it into six by six. That that makes it easier to use sometimes because you're not uh, feeling intimidated, maybe is what it is. So how am I going to use that on this, which is going to be the inside of the card? Well, I'm kind of liked what I did here. I just punched it out and left the designer paper peeking, peeking through. Now I'm going to put this one, uh, the one for today here. So I'm just going to center it here, butt it up against that, that ledge, press down. I, I like that idea, Rhonda. I have to remember that. And... Then we've got it like this. So this paper here was, I think I took the label off without telling you, but it was five 
by three and three quarters. So it is going to go here. And now you see how that designer paper just shines through. And I've got these that I could decorate the edges if I wanted to too. Before I glue it down though, I want to stamp because I always like to stamp before gluing just in case I mess it up and then I can use the other side of the paper. Paper is magical that way, right? It has two sides. So let's put happy birthday in here like that. And I'm going to put a few more speckles. Just carry that along. So I'm going to bring a cushion in because the speckles are photopolymer. Now you'll notice that I pressed too hard and got that there. So you can use a paper towel to wipe that off if that happens. And the other thing is, is remember you just rest it, you don't push it. And sometimes that's hard to remember. Uh. That's likely good enough, but it just sort of carries that through. Now, I could do some designs on the envelope as well, but this is going to now fit in here. Just tried to take the lid off, and it wasn't even on. There we go. Oops, right side up would be a good move. And center it like that. And there you have this card. Now what I could have done, and I brought it here just to show you, I could have dressed it up a little bit by adding some um, linen thread. I, I think linen thread works on a guy's card. So I could have wrapped that around there and I likely would have tied it into a knot and frayed the ends just to add that kind of look. Also, we have what's called the Playing With Patterns Resin Dots and there's crushed curry here. So let's just have a look and see if we like some crushed curry on here. Does that... Ooh, look, really shows up on the green, doesn't it? All right, let me just see. I had thought of putting it here, but I think I'm going to put it down there. And in that case, maybe I need another one. There. And you know me, I like to do threes, but I don't know. Um, yeah, it'll look okay there. So, or I could have even put it here and this could have been it. So you, um, you can play around with this design all you want. It is really a fun, easy way to use designer paper. And I wanted to show you um, how to use it with paper that you might not have been thinking about. You like the crushed curry bling. Yeah, I think it just makes it all pop, doesn't it? All right, thanks, Diana. And I want to show you, now I showed you... Um, Oh, the other thing is, remember, if you want to do your envelope, you can put uh, your designer paper on the envelope flap. I forgot to bring an envelope over, so I'll show you that another time. So here is the exact same design using the Sweet Symmetry, and a few of you wanted to me to showcase that tonight. Now, on this card, when I was doing it, I couldn't decide whether to use the green, the Just Jade, or the Knight of Navy, and my husband suggested the jade, but I caved and I just, I use both. So I've got those narrow little layers there, which some of you don't really appreciate, but I, because I couldn't decide, I use both. So you can always do that. Here, I did not use any um, die cutting or punching. I just used my paper cutter and cut my layers, stamped on it. These are sequins. Uh, and again, I use the two layers like we did on tonight's card. And there it's like that. So I use the punches here. And because the sequins are so flat, I even use them on the inside. And 
there's one more. So, oh, and here's the card for that, the envelope for that one. So we've got that. And then I've got one more, and this is part of my Sweet as a Peach class. So this is using the Sweet as, so all of these papers are on sale. This is using the Sweet as a Peach designer paper. And uh, instead of having it hang over, I pushed it back. I used some die cuts here and went like that. Now this card is ready to send, so I had to cover up the writing, but it's like that. And then I took the paper and also did the envelope flap. So there, um, there are three ideas using tonight's sample. And like I said, later this week, I'm not sure of the time, it's a summer and um, my schedule isn't is all over the map, but I will let you know. I'm going to show you how to make this card, but using six by six paper. So um, uh, stay tuned for that. Now, before I go, I have a few other things to share with you. Um, first off, I have a, a class going on that you can register for right now. It's the Plentiful Plants online class, and there are a few options. Uh, you like those ideas, Sue? I'm glad. And they're they're not hard, are they? <laughs> Making that kind of card. It's it's fun. So and might as well capitalize on both sides of that designer paper. Okay, back to the plentiful um plants class. If you're wanting the kit, if you want the materials prepared for you. Uh, you have to register by tonight. Uh, uh, otherwise, the other options are open. So if you want the bundle and the materials prepared and a package of the in-color jewels, it's $83. If you need it mailed to you, if you can't do front uh, door pickup, it's 87 Now, uh, you have the option also of just getting the handout so it gives the materials that I used, which you can always substitute, gives the cutting instructions, and then has vid a video showing how to do it, um, it is $20. Or if you're in my downline, you get it for half price. So there's a, one of the other perks of being in my downline. So um, just the, um, these are some things that we cards that I'm not sharing in this class, but we've used. So this is what we did last week, is this one here. And again, this designer paper is part of the sale package. Um, here is one that my friend Karen Yeomans did. So it looks like this, and it's a buckle fold. So the this is tucked into there. And then we've got this in the, on the inside like that. So it just fastens back in like that. And then I also have what I call Stampin' Time once a month. And it's usually the second Wednesday of the month. So Stamping Time this coming month is next Wednesday. So if you want to be part of that, uh, you need to let me know by Friday. So Friday is the 9th. So by Friday, let me know. And one of the things, we usually do a new something new, like a new fold or something like that. And then we do a couple of other projects that aren't quite as involved. So one of the things we did last week was this here. So here, let me just see. A little note of thanks. And it's called a pinwheel card. So it's like that. And then you can, it goes flat, goes in an envelope, and we had some fun making that. So that was one of the cards we made last week, again with the Plentiful Plants. So that was, or last month, pardon me. So that was one of the projects from Stampin' Time last month. And people are going to register um, by the 9th if they want. Now I've got a little bin here. I've been receiving cards from other people, or I've made a few too. And I just wanted to to share some of them. Remember I did that alcohol to ink, alcohol and blends um, technique a few weeks ago? Well, I tore one and put it down here. And so there's one more card with it. Did I do the inside? And so there's the inside. So that's, that's one. This is a card I received from Karen congratulating me on an achievement using that gorgeous uh, peach stamp set and paper. Isn't that gorgeous? Now that peach stamp set, I've seen people turn those peaches into cherries and blueberries and all kinds of things. So um, 
something to, to think of. This one I got from my friend Marilyn. Again, congratulating me. I had a, a sales milestone last month. So I have some congratulation cards here. And again, this paper is on sale. And I absolutely love the words in this and in this suite as well. So another gorgeous card. This card just make me made me smile. It's a swap I received. It's that cute turtle one. And the designer paper here is one that you can get with your Stampin' Rewards. This one here, let me just get the ingredients out, is with the pansy. So there's your pansy paper on that side like that. So that's um, by Charlotte. And then here's another one here, the strawberries on, and then that whimsy dye. And this is by Rhonda McLeod. So thank you, Rhonda. And here is one, again, using Misty Moonlight, some of the designer paper. I like how she layered the twine and the ribbon. I really like that. And then this great die. So it opens. So this is the same opening as the pansy card. But it looks totally different, doesn't it? Just because it's different paper, different stamps, different dies. So same opening. And then Sylvia did this fun fold with the peach paper like that. So uh, another fun technique. And then Karen Gardner. So I know a lot of Karens. So that's she did the Z fold card and using the poppies. But I love what she did. She put the outline of the poppy on top of vellum. And it looks just so delicate. I really like how that turned out. And... Uh, so those are some of the, oh, I've got one more here. And I can't remember if I've shown you this one before or not, but there we go, like that. And it, this is a, a die that makes this shape. And so there we go. So thank you for joining me tonight. And remember to, um, if you like or follow or share, that's, that's the way you show me some love. And if you're on YouTube, if you hit subscribe or like, um, that also is wonderful. So thank you so much for joining me. Look for that next class later this week. I will uh, let you know when it is. Have fun with that designer paper and be brave and cut into it. Thank you. Bye-bye.